Greetings, respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland. Here I am at Harrow School in London. So Harrow School uh, was, um, and is actually, are very often mentioned at the same breath as Eton, and uh, was by many people was regarded to be the best school uh, in the British Empire, at the zenith of <coughs> British imperialism. So had a healthy rivalry with Eton. I know I'm biased on this one, but I think an, an, an objective observer would still say, would say now that Eton is definitely better in terms of academic success, sporting prowess, or just about anything, having more money, more famous old boys, and blah, blah, blah. So Harrow School um, is in London. There's an area of London called Harrow. Harrow School was founded in, 18, sorry, in 1572 by John Lyon, who was a wealthy local landowner, and he got a charter from Queen Elizabeth I to set the school up here. And um, here we are. This is the speech room, which is open to the public. Some gallery, because they have speech day, like a big open day in the summer. And you can see oh, there on that bit that's jutting out under the windows, the school's coat of arms, that, uh, that lion rampant, and a bit of the, um, the old the school uh, motto, um, the how, may the house of fortune stand and so forth. So um, Harrow School, it's on this hill. There's an area of London called Harrow on the Hill. That's the tube station to come to if you want to see Harrow School, because there's several Harrow stations. There's Harrow West and Harrow South, and I can't think of the other ones. Harrow's a large area which um, had the indignity being represented in Parliament by Sir Oswald Mosley right after the First World War. So here is a bit of the chapel. The school's divided into 12 houses, um, boarding houses, that's it, that is, and they compete against each other in sports and so forth. Um, it's an all-boys school. What can I say now? Almost 20 years ago, they started founding overseas versions of Harrow. There's um, a Harrow school in Beijing and Harrow school in Shanghai a Harrow School in Hong Kong and a Harrow School in Bangkok, all of which are mixed. But as I say, this one is, is resolutely all male. Uh, what else can I say about it? So by the 18th century, it was one of the leading schools in the realm. Uh, so uh, many aristocrats were coming here because it was a very inegalitarian society back then, dominated by um, uh, landed magnates. You see the gates here, a memorial to somebody who was killed fighting in Russia in 1919, you know, fighting the Russian Civil War, a Britisher who intervened. But um, anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, then in 1805, the Eton Harrow match started up at Lord's. Lord's being a, a cricket ground founded by John Lord. It's in, in um, Marlebone in the center of London. We're 10 miles in the center of London as, as, a, um, uh, as a milestone helpfully tells us. So we're on a hill and it affords a most magnificent vista over London. You can see behind me, I might film it later. Uh, in more detail. So uh, Etonians would um, contemptuously call this place the dump on the hump or, or, or sing um, rude songs. If I had the wings of a sparrow, I'd fly over to Harrow and crap on the buggers below and so on. You know, that's what first class education gives you. Anyway, so when, when John Lyon died, the school had hardly begun and his widow really got it going. So 1615 is the oldest building, it's this building here. Um, which um, has been greatly um, extended since then, of course. And then the, the school's now got about 800 boys. So um, Lord Byron, the poet, was here. He played in the first Eton Harrow cricket match in 1805. They used to send a challenge back and forth to each other. There were some cricketing dynasties, family, several generations of who would play, like the Littleton family at Eton, and then there was a Littleton who was headmaster, Humphrey Littleton, who being his son, the famous jazz musician. Ollie Littleton was in my house and I was there. Despite the same name Littleton, he was about six foot seven. So it was, he, was a, he was a wet bulb, not a dry bulb, as in he was a rower, not a cricketer. Um, well, he was fairly good at cricket, though that wasn't his main sport. But um, anyway, they, they don't row at Harrow because they're not that near the River Thames. Um, anyway, behind me there is the Vaughan Library, named after Vaughan, a headmaster. So many of the streets and houses are named after notable houses. There's the headmaster's house, as in a boarding house, but the headmaster's not in charge of it anymore. Time was the headmaster, as well as running the whole school, had a house, because every housemaster has a, every house has a house tutor, a man who lives in to look after the welfare of the boys. He teaches lessons, but not so many, because he's got a lot of correspondence to do with the parents, a lot of admin involved. So he's almost like a parent for them. He's a go-to person for any difficulties in the pastoral sense or any good news indeed. So um, Jawaharlal Nehru was here, the first Prime Minister of India. So he came here at the age of 15, which is unusually late. They usually began at 12 or 13, and I spent only two years here before going to Trinity College, Cambridge. So obviously in the old days, Latin and ancient Greek was um, the mainstay of the curriculum, but um, those subjects are taught. 
Um, everyone does a bit of Latin, hardly anybody does Greek. Those aren't su such a big deal anymore. There wasn't that much science, maths. In the old days, obviously, there was no IT until the 80s. So um, they're still called the headmaster's house. The headmaster doesn't run a boarding house anymore. It's far too busy. Here's Mr. Alistair Land, um, W-M-A-L. He's a Mancunian who went to Cambridge, read natural sciences there. What you will not find on Mr. Land's CV is that he trained to be an officer in the Royal Marines and dropped out, couldn't take it. Now, I couldn't take it either. I wouldn't be able to, well, I wouldn't even get selected to try the course. Even when I was 18, I wouldn't have been fit enough. I couldn't hack it for one day, but he tried and failed. Okay, don't want to sneer at the guy too much but uh, he obviously covers that one up because it doesn't reflect too much credit on him. There is a CCF here as in Combined Cadet Force where they can do military training um, as in Army, Navy, Air Force. I'm actually not sure they have a Royal Navy section. So one afternoon a week doing some military training, one weekend a term going away to do military training, one week a year doing military training and possibly going on to Army officers, RAF officers, Naval officers. Very few of them do these days. So not that academically successful. Very few of them go on to Oxford or Cambridge, but for other things obviously there's a theater here they've had famous actors like um benedict benedict cumberbatch come here or um carrie carrie and i pronounce it elwes so um lord shaftesbury came here the famous is it the um 14th earl um the, the poor man's earl they call him who when he was a schoolboy here he saw the a pauper's funeral so um uh, someone who was impecunious having their funeral and that uh, affected him deeply and he was struck with compassion for those who were um, less fortunate than himself, which is virtually everybody, because he was born into a noble family, had plenty of money, never lacked for anything. And here he went to this outstanding school and had so many opportunities which were not afforded to other people. And he vowed to do something to better the lot of um, Joe Average. And indeed he did bringing in like the 10 hours act, limiting the working age to 10 hours and raising the minimum age at which children could, could work full time and so forth. Um, so this is Harrow and it blends into the town. Okay, just ordinary buildings which are not part of Harrow School are here and there. There's a, there's a, a big run they all go on in November. That some of the boys run all the way to the Albert Memorial, the centre of London. You go down that way and that's down towards Harrow on the hill. Tube station. I've only, this is the thrice in my life I've ever been here. Lots of games pitches. There certainly was a school farm. I don't know if it still exists. Oh, here's a drawery, a boarding house, but a closer view of one of the um, of the coat of arms. Yeah, state Fortuna Domus. So, so may the house of fortune stand. Donorum de dispensio fidelis. Um, oh my God, I'm really put on the spot here. Um, God dispenses faith to the donors. I probably got that very wrong. Um, anyway. So you see on this the headmaster's house, the big, the coat of arms there, that's the one that was Nero was, Nero was in. And he was a very ductile boy. He never caused grief for any of the masters. So what else can I tell you about Harris School? Um, there's a bit of a public gallery open to go and look, open to the public. Um, that's that. So prime ministers who went here, well, let's see, um, Spencer Percival, the only one to be assassinated, was bumped off by, um, uh, what's his name, John Bellingham, because during the Napoleonic Wars, France was briefly an ally of, 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 of Russia. So the United Kingdom banned commerce with Russia. Bellingham's business was ruined. So he went to the House of Commons and he shot dead Spencer Percival. Bellingham was arrested on the spot and hanged three days later. You know, trials were pretty quick in those days. Ironically, his, um, ans sorry, his descendant, Henry Bellingham, was a, was a Tory MP for Norfolk Northwest. I don't think he still is. But he went to Eton, no, um, uh, uh, Spencer Percival went to Harrow, not John Bellingham. But the descendant went to Wheaton. I suppose Harry wouldn't welcome him over much. Who else? The Earl of Aberdeen, that uh, Whig Prime Minister. Viscount Palmerston, that Liberal Prime Minister, was here. Sir Robert Peel, a Tory Prime Minister, was here. Stanley Baldwin, Conservative Prime Minister, 1922 to 23, and then again 24 to 29, and then again 35 to 37. He was here, as was, of course, Winston Churchill. That's why there's a, a block of classrooms named in honor of Churchill. The King Hussein of Jordan was here, um, as were his, his cousins, the kings of Iraq, as in subsequent kings, not, not, not consecutive, not, not simultaneous kings, that's that. So um, just think, anyone else I should tell you who's been here, well, that historian Simon Seabag Montefiore said, is not that academic. You could be very brainy and come here, but if you're that scholarly, it might not be the place for you. Anything else I should say about Harrow School? Maybe that's just about it. I might go into one of the galleries now or later go somewhere when I can give you a better view. So a lot of it's not open to the public, so I'm not intruding. I shan't trespass. And they've got many games, pictures and so on. 
an old parish church. So originally it was meant to be it was a charitable foundation for, for ordinary boys from this parish. And their schooling was free. Um, <clears throat> and they, they, then there were foreigners who were not from the parish who paid to come here. But it increasingly became fee paying and became a school for the affluent. So it really had lost sight of its, its, its original mission. And back in, in then the late 19th century, it said, well, let's actually go back to what we were founded to do. And then 1872, they founded the John Lyon School close by to here, which actually is still an independent school, but only about half the price of this one. I think it's a day, day school only. So that is that. So it certainly was very socially exclusive. They still have the Eton Harrow match. Anything else I should tell you, they're known for their notable uniform, or their Sunday uniform, their, um, uh, grey stripy trousers, the black tailcoat, the special harrow hat. It's not a boater, but it looks very like it. And their special whatever ties they could wear if they got a particular distinction for sports or things of that nature. It's affiliated to the Church of England, so it's an Anglican school. There's a chapel, they must attend worship, whatever the religious denomination. So Christians of other denominations are welcome. And um, uh, people of other religions, Muslims, the Jews, Hindus and so forth, they are obviously allowed to come here as well. They must attend chapel though. That's that. Um, so another one of the houses. Anything else? So quite an old world place, quite tranquil. It's half term now, which is why there are no pupils. Otherwise you must, might think it's the perfect school, a school without any pupils. That's easy to run. It's like hospitals would run much more efficiently if there were no patients and nobody ever fell ill. Anything else I'd say about Harrow School? I know it is a farm implement. It's a place in Ireland called Harrow as well. There's Harrow County School, which is a local comprehensive school. Michael Portillo went there, but don't let that put you off. Uh, the one for boys, the girls one, Diane Abbott, that veteran socialist MP. She was there the same time that um, Portillo was at the brother school. Anyway, that's probably enough about Harrow School. Um, so I'll switch it off now.